Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IES. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with the practice questions for the day, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IES is extending the Mega Scholarship Program. As you all know, you would be able to avail as much as 50% of the discount on our live online classroom program. This date has been extended up until 12th of June. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the pinned comment and register now to get a call back from our counsellors. Let's get started and look into the first practice question. Consider the following statement. The Great Stupa at Sanchi has been declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It was built during Emperor Ashoka's reign. Ashoka spoke of Buddhism only to his co-religionists and not to others. The second Buddhist council was convened under the patronage of Ashoka. How many of the above statements are correct? The answer to this is only two. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Ashoka. Which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, the great stupa at Sanchi has been declared as a world heritage site by UNESCO. It was built during Ashoka's reign. Yes, this statement is right. And this has also been declared as a world heritage site by UNESCO. So the first statement is correct. When you look into the second statement, Ashoka spoke of Buddhism only to his co-religionists and not to others. What exactly happened? After the Kalinga war, Ashoka, who was very aggressive in the initial phase of his life, also turned towards pacifism and he also embraced Buddhism as well. So Ashoka repeatedly declared that he understood the dharma of life. He also wanted to have Passions of truthfulness, compassion, mercifulness, benevolence, non-violence, ahimsa, so on and so forth. And he ultimately discussed all these principles of Buddhism only with the co-religionists and not with others. So he spoke of no particular mode of religious creed or worship nor of the philosophical doctrines. He only spoke of Buddhism only to his co-religionists and not with other section of the people. However, with other religious sects, he also adopted a policy of respect and also gave them the freedom to live according to their own principles as well. So the second statement is correct. When you look into the third statement, the second Buddhist council was convened under the patronage of Ashoka. This statement is wrong. It is the third Buddhist council that was convened under the patronage of Ashoka. So third Buddhist council conducted under the patronage of Emperor Ashoka of Maurya dynasty. It was held in 250 BC at Pataliputra. The council was presided over by Mughaliputta Tessa. The Abhidharma Pittaka was composed here making the almost completion of the modern Pali Tipitaka. The first Buddhist council was under the patronage of King Ajata Shatru of Haryanka dynasty. And as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section under whose regime did the second and the fourth Buddhist council take place is what you have to put on the comment section. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to insurance sector, consider the following pairs. Bhima Sugam online portal which is a one-stop shop for all insurance related queries. Bhima Wahak he is tasked to sell and service simple parametric bundled insurance products. Bhima Vistar a social Bima Vistar, a social safety net product targeting the untapped geographies. How many of the above pairs are correctly matched? The answer to this is all three pairs. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Bhima Vahak, which is why we have taken this practice question. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, it makes a reference to Bhima Sugam. What is this Bhima Sugam? It happens to be an online portal, which is a one-stop shop for all insurance related queries. Let's say for example, there is a person who wants to know about different insurance schemes, so on and so forth. So what should he do? He should visit this particular platform. On this particular platform, he can raise issues with respect to claim settlement, insurance advice, insurance related queries, 
policy purchase so on and so forth so on this portal he would be able to get his clarifications clarified so that he has no ambiguity with respect to the insurance policies so the first statement is right when you look into the second statement bima wahak he is tasked to sell and service simple parametric bundle insurance products what do we understand by this we have the banking correspondence when it comes to the banking sector what do they do they go to the villages ensure that all the banking services are provided to the people. people similarly a bima wahak is also tasked to sell insurance products so so that there is social security net so when it comes to the bima wahak what do they do they under the gram panchayat will go to people and ultimately ensure that insurance products are given awareness to the people and these people ultimately buy it so the bima wahak is a core component of irdi insurance for all under the scheme they gain the trust of the locals for distribution of insurance products insurers will have to implement a board approved policy in hiring and training bima wahak second statement is right when you look into the third statement a social safety net product targeting the untapped geographies let's say for example the urban areas we have the elite section of the people they would have taken up the insurance policies there might be remote areas where people might not know about these ideas so what happens in bima vastar it is that particular area where targeting the untapped geography is in works and is going to be launched soon by the insurance sector now let's look into the next practice question which of the following statements is are correct the first law commission was established by the east india company under the charter act of 1833 the law commission recommendations made in the report are binding which of the statements are correct the answer to this is one only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the indian express makes a reference to law commission of india which is why we have taken this practice question when you consider the law commission of india it acts as an advisory body to the law ministry it is neither a statutory nor a constitutional body it is established by an executive resolution is it finding a mention in the constitution of india no is there a law passed for the establishment of the law commission of india no it happens to be one of the bodies which is created as a result of executive resolution it is primarily composed of legal experts the first commission in india was formed in 1955 with its chairman being the then attorney general of india mc settlewar this is after the independence but before the independence it has a pre independence origin and the first commission was formed in 1834 as a result of charter act of 1833 under the chairmanship of tb mccauley so the first statement that is given is correct but when it comes to the second statement it is wrong why that is because all the recommendations that are made by the law commission is not binding they are only advisory in nature so it means the government may well accept it or may not accept it as well it is the discretion that is given to the government so the law commission will be given certain objectives let's say for example we have the uniform civil code or let's say for example we have a specific law or let's say the ipc or the crpc so on and so forth so a particular objective is given to the law commission so they have to look into that particular section law or a particular framework so they will look into all the loopholes they'll do a swot analysis and ultimately they will give a recommendation to the government of india the government of india may well accept it or they may also reject it as well it is just advisory in nature so what are the functions of the law commission of india repeal or review view of the object laws study laws that affect the conditions of the country poor laws they will analyze it ultimately report it to the government give its view on various connected matters of law and ultimately they suggest changes as well even in the present situation the law commission has said that with respect to the sedition we have to raise the jail term to 7 years or even imprisonment can be given to such individual these are some of the recommendations given by the law commission with respect to section 124a now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements with respect to monetary policy committee it decides the rbi's benchmark interest rate it is a 12 member body including the governor of rbi and is constituted every year it functions under the chairmanship of union finance minister which of the statements given above is are correct the answer to this is one only 
why have we taken this practice question because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to monetary policy committee which is why we have taken this practice question let us try and understand what are these statements when you look into the first statement yes the first statement is right it is the monetary policy committee which decides the RBI's benchmark interest rate first statement is right when you look into the second statement the second statement is wrong primarily because it has six members the government will nominate as many as three members so the second statement is wrong it functions under the chairmanship of the union finance minister no the governor of the reserve bank of india is the ex officio chairperson of the mpc so it is not under the chairmanship of union finance minister this means the answer to this would be one only now let's look into the next practice question the function of heavy water in a nuclear reactor is to slow down the speed of neutrons increase the speed of neutrons cool down the reactor stop the nuclear reaction the answer to this is slow down the speed of neutrons this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2011 now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is draft on cyber safety for the PSOs let us try and understand what is this concept all about when it comes to the cyber security in India what happens there are number of sectors that are hit there are number of sectors which are constantly hit by cyber attacks there are cyber warfares between country as well there might be hackers from one country who may sabotage some of the critical infrastructure in another country is well so in order to prevent such cyber attacks on important critical infrastructure with respect to the banking sector with respect to the payment sector what we have is the Reserve Bank of India which has given certain guidelines for the PSOs so what is it all about we have the Reserve Bank of India which has given certain directions and these directions will have to be implemented by the payment system operators which is basically done to improve safety and security of the payment system so as per the proposed directions of the Reserve Bank of India these PSOs will have to report unusual incident let's say for example there is a cyber security attack let's say for example there's outage of critical system or infrastructure or let's say for example internet fraud or settlement delay in all these cases they have to report to the RBI within six hours of detection so the minute they find out that there is an issue with Within their infrastructure there has been a cyber attack they have to immediately notify the Reserve Bank of India the minute they get to know within six hours the RBI has also proposed that all individuals having access to the IT environment when it comes to the payment settlement will be assigned a unique identity which shall be maintained and monitored till termination these are some of the important provisions what was the need of it the need of it is because of late the financial stability can be broken if they are able to hack the system so in order to ensure that we have stability in the financial system this initiative has been taken up what are the other measures that have to be taken up it is proposed to issue directions covering robust governance mechanism for identification assessment monitoring and management of all these risks the directions will cover baseline security measures for ensuring resilience as well as safety and security of digital payment transactions and at the same time the PSOs will also have to formulate a board approved information security policy to manage potential risk covering all applications with respect to the payment settlement system it is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best